Live the Roxy on this Saturday. It's Saturday, and just for all the haters, I'm in my Patriots hat. Um, it's like not, it's warm in the house, but it's not nice out here. It's supposed to snow all day, but it's a little too warm for snow, so it's just downpouring. It's like 37 degrees right now. You guys know snow don't come till 32 degrees, so. We have a lot to talk about today on the show, and it's not just all about the weather. I know you guys love those shows where I just speak about the weather for an hour, but today is just not one of them. Jim Jordan's mad annoying. If you don't know who I'm talking about, don't you worry. I'll explain what's going on. That tweet that he put out today, though, woof. Ava DuVernay is the best, and she is developing a DC comic uh, TV show, Naomi at the CW, based off of a print that came out in 2019, which is pretty exciting. Activision is suing Netflix. They're suing them for poaching their CFO. It's the third time that Netflix has been sued for something like this. So just interesting to kind of break down the business side of the entertainment industry. And speaking of the business side of the entertainment industry, as we know on this show, movie theaters are really struggling right now. But will Congress bail them out? There's a 15 billion, that's billion with a B, billion dollar bill that could get passed to help give them some relief. So we will break all that down and more here today live at the Roxy. Plus, we announced that the World Girls calendar is officially on sale. I will walk you guys through that as well. And, of course, Brett Hankinson, Miles Cosgrove, Jonathan Magley arrest the cops that killed Breonna Taylor, all three of them for killing Breonna Taylor. I feel like at this point I'm saying it so often that maybe you guys are desensitized to it, but I hope that every single time I say it, we really put the energy and thought into it that it deserves, which is what the fuck what the fuck? <sighs> uh, also, streamlaunch.com slash Roxy Stryer. Any questions, comments, concerns? We're probably going to keep it to a tight 35-minute show day because my sister is coming to sit outside with me. I know I said it was pouring, but we will probably sit under the portico. Um, or my dad said maybe we could do on the porch with all the windows and doors open. So we will see how that works out. Thank you to everybody joining me at this earlier time this morning. I know I went up pretty quickly and a lot of you guys didn't know that we'd be going live a little bit earlier. But here we are still from Newton, Massachusetts. Hello to Mark Jason Ali, Glenn Caesar, John Bainbridge, Patrick Banham, John Get Bent, Redford Reddington, Scott Welsh. Demo Katabe, Juan Mendez, Bruce Banner, Star Gonzalez, Simply Emily, Prince That Wasn't Promised, Andrew Thomas, Mark the Drifter. Well, if you're going to drift, I'd rather you drift to live at the Roxy and so many more. You guys are the shit. Notice our likes have been down on videos. So if you could do me a quick favor and like this video, I would really, really appreciate it. Let's get into the Streamlabs, see what you guys are talking about today before we get into what I want to talk about today. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Have I said that enough yet today? What is the date? It's the 5th. Let's see what came in after the show yesterday. Late, late last night, John Get Bent says, hi, you might want to save this for a Jet episode. Hmm. I will ask Jet, but it's what do you think are the best slash worst team names any sport also, Edmonton's CFL team, Edmonton CFL team is changing names and it's battle. Some are calling everybody PC snowflakes while they whine about a minor change. Hmm. What do you guys think of the worst team names? Let's have the conversation here in the chat. Let me know what are the worst sports team names. Obviously, there's some team names that are still like borderline racist. So those are bad. But do you mean just like bad sounding? Would love to know you guys' thoughts. Submit those throughout the show. Thank you, John. Get bent. And I'll ask my brother when I talk to him next. I called him to be on the show this morning, but I think he's still asleep. LD123 says, hey, coach. I'm heading to rehearsal, and because we are off tomorrow, the younger member of the cast and crew are getting a suite and party tonight and all day Sunday. Most of the crew are girls, so I won't be surrounded by all boys. Romeo and I had a great evening where he made another great dinner and gave me a great foot rub. I think he said food rub, but I think you mean foot rub. We did have our first 
off stage kiss interesting and it was even better than an on stage kiss he made the first move and i leaned in to pick up my plate and uh when i went leaned in to pick up my plate and kissed me softly nothing else happened but i'm pretty sure this means he likes me too i would say that's a safe bet ld my plan is to act like nothing happened while we are around everyone and keep it professional i'll let my vibrator finish me off good call ld if we get to tour, would you come see us in LA? LD, I would love to come see you in LA. As long as it's not during a COVID time, uh, I would absolutely adore to. Sounds like a blast. Let me know your schedule because fuck yeah, yes, yes, yes. And uh, in terms of this, in terms of um, keeping it professional, I think that's a smart move. Uh, be careful. I think that kisses are relatively innocent. Feelings can get very confused during this time, though. So just be as safe and slow as humanly possible here. And uh, I know that you guys are all probably getting tested because you guys are all in rehearsal together. But just be careful partying in the suite and stuff. It's still a crazy time. So you just want to keep it as safe as you possibly can. All right, what are you guys talking about in the chat right now? Let's see what's going on in here. Uh, the Pelicans, Ben says he doesn't like. Chris says the Patriots are the worst team. That's so stupid. It's great. Uh, John says Mighty Ducks. Uh, Oklahoma Thunder, real origin for NBA, says Ryan. I feel like there's not so many, like, horribly shitty ones. Um, yeah, I don't know. Isak says, Dan Merle responded to my comment on his WB Slate video. Do you still talk to Dan Merle? Yeah, Dan and I are friends. I love Dan. I haven't talked to him much since he left the state, but definitely, like, we always reach out to each other for, like, birthdays or holiday season or whatever. I love him and Mara. So, um, yeah, we'll always be in touch and communication because they're great. And remember, I worked with Dan for five years at Screen Junkies. So Dan and I are, are good friends and um Mara has been such a, an amazing resource for me and doll and support system for me during some crazy times. So I appreciate them both a lot. Thanks for asking the question. Any other questions, comments, concerns, things you guys want read out loud on the show today, go streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Appreciate it, my friends. All right, let's talk about some of the things going on in the world because there is an entire world outside of Live of the Roxy. I know. We don't like to think so, but there is. Jim Jordan. Yo, this dude. This one boy's mad annoying. Uh, I don't know how to say it any more clearly than like people should in his people who have his thoughts should not be in positions of power. He is a representative uh, and he <laughs> tweeted out today. It's an actual tweet from him. And if you want to see it, it's at Jim underscore Jordan representative Jim Jordan. He says, Dr. Fauci says, Americans should avoid travel over the holidays. What will he cancel next? Saying Merry Christmas? I mean, is this guy a fucking idiot? There's been, so, we've talked about Jim Jordan on the show before because he's done some other stupid outlandish things, but like, you're saying Merry Christmas has killed how many people? None. Avoiding travel over the holidays could save so many lives. Pink Sweets says, I'm so tired. I feel you, Pink Sweets. It's just like, yeah, Ryan Payne with just the face palm. Are you fucking dumb? Like, why are you so fucking stupid? And I'm not even saying this to be mean. I, I just really believe, like, what? Why are you, why are you like this? Like, what is the conspiracy theory against Fauci? Fauci says avoid travel. What will he cancel next? Fauci is not causing us to avoid travel. Fauci is advising that we avoid travel as the scientist and doctor that he is. He's not canceling anything. You think he caused COVID? What? This is so fucking stupid. He's a doctor. So he's telling us that we should avoid travel, which is what all doctors and scientists are saying to us right now. They're saying, stay the fuck home. It's one of the reasons that I've stayed back here for so long and trying to avoid traveling in the heat of Thanksgiving or the heat of Christmas time. Like, uh, ugh, ugh, you guys in here. Star just says, ugh. Yeah, I know. Isak, great question. Does Jim Jordan know that Melania hates Christmas? Oh my God, Doreen and Steph and I talk about that all the time. 
her quote on Christmas is just so fucking funny. Noah Demon says he also overlooked reports of sexual assault when he worked in a college. He's just a piece of shit. I know Noah Demon. A lot of people are treating, tweeting that as a response. Like, who are you to judge other people when this is what you did? Completely. Completely. John says, ugh, it's one year, people. If you can't skip holidays for one stupid year to save lives, then you're dumb and selfish and should feel bad. I told you guys this. I think everybody has a different situation, but I agree that if you can stay home during this time, stay home if you can. Um, and if you can't, then you have to be as safe as fucking possible about it. It's the people who are like, traveling freely and not wearing masks and not washing their hands and doing all these things. It's just like, what? Those are the people who are saying, what's he going to come after next? Say Merry Christmas. Are you stupid? What? How stupid are you? Please be smart and safe, says Pedro. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Stormy says, why are Republicans every year trying to have a war on Christmas with people? It's always something asinine. I know. I'm not even trying to start a war on Christmas and I'm a Jew girl. I guess that's also just known as being Jewish. What do you guys think? Let me know. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Is Jim Jordan just like an asshat or do you think that there's any kind of validity here? Talk to me, people. Glenn Caesar in Streamlabs says, hello and good afternoon, Roxy. Love you as always. Thanks for taking the time to hang out with us today. I hope you and the rock stars all have a love and laughter filled rest of your Saturday. Peace, love, bunnies, and hugs to you and all of the rock stars. Hashtag smash cancer. Once again, I hope that we can all find some joy in each of our days, our weeks, our months, and even our years. I know it can be tough, but even if we're by ourselves, we're not alone. The rock stars and world friends community will be there for you. Remember, everyone, you're kind, you're smart, you're important, you are worthy. Again, I know it may be tough, but even if we're by ourselves, we're not alone. Thanks, for RJ and Rockstars, for always being such great friends and lending your listening ears. Glenn, you are the freaking best. You're the heart and soul of the show. You're the mascot. And uh, we so appreciate you reminding us that we are worthy because it's easy as fuck to forget. Jake Giacovetta in the house, everybody. My amazing moderator, reminding people, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. A few other shout outs. Steamer in the house. What? Stop the steamer. Steamer and I go back. Good old Jim Jordan. I wish it was that kind of Jim Jordan. Uh, Jim Gordon would be better. But yeah, he's brutal. He's so fucking brutal. Uh, <laughs> Hitman says, Jim is a noted asshat. I feel that. I feel that. Uh, Ryan says, it's against my better judgment, but my wife and I are staying home. My parents live in Minnesota. My brother and his kids live in Wisconsin. Uh, I don't know that it's against your better judgment. And I think that your wife is being smart about it if she's the one who's convinced you. So, you guys, we're doing what we can. We all got to do our part as much as we can. You got to stay sane as well, but you got to stay safe. And all these things matter. Let's move forward. And talk a little bit about Ava DuVernay, who is developing a DC Comics drama called Naomi for the CW. I have to be perfectly upfront and honest with you guys. I didn't know jack shit about Naomi. You know, I'm a DC lover and a DC fan. So I was like, what is this? Um, and apparently it's a title written by Brian Michael Bendis. So in, Brian, in Michael Bendis, we trust. So that gives me a lot of faith in it. And David F. Walker and Ava DuVernay set her sights on the CW for this. Um, she's teaming up with Jill Blankenship, who did Arrow to... Um, or as one of the people behind Arrow to develop DC Comics title, Naomi, for the Younger Skewing Broadcast Network. They're calling CW Younger Skewing, which is definitely true, but I do think that they have some edgier stuff that's been going on there. It's based on the 2019 DC comic, um, and it was illustrated by Jamal uh, Campbell. It follows a young woman on her unique hero's journey. The CW take, which is being written and executive produced by DuVernay, Duvernay and Blankenship, follows a teen girl's journey from her small northwestern town to the heights of the multiverse, the supernatural event rattles her hometown. Naomi sets out to uncover its origins. Uh, it sounds cool. And I love that we're, that Ava DuVernay is like fully diving into the comic book world. I think that her doing a CW show makes us have a lot more faith in it. She's developing this. I'm assuming that means she's EPing it, but I'm not exactly sure what her role is going to be in terms of writing and directing what she's going to want to work on. She does all of those things. But when she's attached to something and it's a Brian Michael Bendis adaptation, I'm like, 
all right, this is probably really cool. It also seems like even though it's kind of Arrowverse-y, it's not totally Arrowverse-y, and I think we could use some DC shows. We need the new blood in there. I know that we've got, we lost Arrow after eight seasons, um, and we've got Lois and Clark, Superman and Lois. <laughs> like that's not right superman and lois that's coming there as well um i know coming to hbo max obviously we're gonna have the green lantern series but we let's crank these dc shows out let's see what sticks and let's uh, i know that's not the actual thing that i should be saying we should be taking care and time developing them but if you've got her on and it seems like a cool story then i'm like yep sign me up what do you guys think are you excited for naomi is this not up your alley what do you want to see ava duvernay work on next i know that she is one of the hottest names in hollywood right now her name gets tossed around for like every single project uh we're losing black lightning too says ryan we're also losing supergirl yeah zachary gibbon says sucks that supergirl is going away i do agree thunder god says naomi is a really new character ben just created her only like a year ago yeah that was in 2019 not sure i feel about cw adapting this though why not though thunder god what's what's the downside they're developing it right now and uh hopefully you know it could be a really really great show what's what's the harm in developing it sips tea sips tea Zeno says naomi is a great character john says just skim naomi's wiki she's basically a super saiyan uh sounds pretty awesome to me lois and clark lol roxy has dean kane on the brain Oh, he does so many problematic things. It's just like, God damn, if you're going to be our Superman, do you have to just like speak about other things? Because uh, 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 uh. sure, that's a lovely noise, especially if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. Speaking of Apple Podcasts, y'all, we've got some great reviews that have come in, so I'll read those on the show. Um, I'll do that in a second. But first, Hitman Hudson in the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Strayer said, so I've been reading Brian Michael Bendis, run on Legion of Superheroes. And let me say, wow, this is magnificent. This is spectacular. This is amazing. Do you have a favorite member of the Legion of Superheroes? Um, hmm, I don't know. Who is your favorite member of the Legion of Superheroes? Uh, I feel like anytime anybody asks me my favorite member of the Justice League or like, it, honestly, of any like the Avengers or anything, I feel like my answer is always changing based on my mood or based on like what I, yeah, based on my mood or based on like what it is that I am looking for at that time period in my life. Like, every time that my brother reminds me that Superman was my favorite character growing up, I'm like, really? Cause like, I feel like so much more of a Batman girl, but then like, I mean, he is pretty cool. So I don't know. Um, usually I pr probably would say Saturn girl. Uh, what do you guys think? Let's see what you guys have in here. Um, oh, nobody's picking their favorite members. Nobody is picking their favorite members. That's fine. You guys don't have to participate if you don't want to. What's that voice, Rox? What's that voice? She just can't help it. Uh, yeah yeah all right well anyway i'm glad you're enjoying the run and keep us posted on how it is superman batman brainiac five brainiac five couple brainiac john stewart Who's your favorite member of the Legion of Doom? Brock Turner. That's a Tomorrow Show reference for those of you guys who don't understand. Thank you, Steamer, for making me chuckle just now. Garth Harkness McMurray in here says uh, in the Streamlabs, my wish for you to experience snow before you go back to California is granted today. I don't know that you can call this snow, Garth. It's fucking just rain, thicker rain. I know you hate the snow and the cold, but I love it. I'm happy you get to have some Boston, Boston weather, winter weather. I hope you get to have a snowball fight with Jen Sky. There's no chance. There's no snow on the ground. It's all water. There's just nothing. Uh, Danny says, I know nothing. I feel that. I'm with you, Danny, says Jake. That's totally fine. But you guys are talking about, you guys are just naming characters Batman and Superman, but you're not talking about the Legion of Superheroes because that's not who's currently in them anymore. 
whatever. Who the fuck? whatever everybody live your own life and if you're not super nerdy it really doesn't matter you're all welcome on the show at all times and we're here to educate each other on everything yeah that's right all right let's move forward guys let's move on if you have any questions comments concerns as you know streamlabs.com slash roxy stryer put them in put them loud put them proud the world girls we dropped our calendar so for those of you guys who don't know i'm really fucking excited about this the World Girls announced that we were putting out a calendar. We give everything a whirl. Our December last episode, our in real life episode, is going to be a film of our calendar shoot. And during that calendar shoot, um, we decided that we were going to actually make the calendar and have it be our first merch item for you guys, which is Dope City. Um, but at the same time, the problem with dropping the in real life episode as the last episode of the month is that if we don't have you guys order your calendars until then, then you won't get them until the end of January, which would mean that you would miss a month of the calendar. So we officially launched today. I'll put this up here so you guys can see how you guys can get the calendar. So if you guys want to purchase the calendar, it's $35 for the calendar or $65 for the calendar to be signed by all three of us. Um, to be perfectly honest with you guys, making the calendar was so much more expensive than we thought it was going to be. This probably isn't really going to make us any money, but we need to at least make our money back. So that's why, um, plus like, and that is including shipping. So hopefully um, you guys are interested in this. That picture on the left there is actually one of the photos, but it's got a dope ass background um, from the calendar shoot. And this Sunday we're going to be going over. So tomorrow even more. But if you're living in the United States, all you have to do is go streamlabs.com slash the world girls, send that money, give your name, give your address, and we'll send you the calendar and it should be there. ASAP. Uh, yeah, we're stoked. This calendar has taken us like hundreds of hours to create as we've had to learn how to do like photography and um, figure out how to physically create the calendar. And as Jake knows, Photoshop is not my forte, uh, but it's been really, really fucking bomb. So some of the pictures are like bizarro. And when I say bizarro, I mean like bizarro, like truly you're looking to be like, what the fuck is happening here? Some of them are sexy. Some of them are really funny. Um, it's kind of all over the place. And every single month is a picture of all three of us. So that's what's pretty cool about it that every single month it's not just one of us like we worked really hard to make it so all three of us were on every single month the shoot probably took us like 12 hours thank you to Cameron Rice who was our amazing photographer and then taught us how to photograph each other um to Frank Luca Torto who just like slayed this so fucking hard that it's crazy he helped us learn photoshop and how to edit um to Brennan who is our sound guy and like was so so helpful to Nathan Hamill who helped edit a couple photos for us as well as he's a really good friend of Darina's so thank goodness for him to Stephen Lemieux who edited a photo for us also to Anushka who helped us on set that day um it, it was a very collaborative effort and we had a lot of people who were like just believe in us and wanted this calendar to go off without a hitch so we finalized the calendar last night we already put in a shipment for 20 that are coming to us um, cause we're hoping to sell at least that amount, but hopefully more. And then we can put in the next shipment really soon. And yeah, I think that, uh, you guys are going to love it. It's really fucking dope. Like we worked on every single page for so many hours to really make sure that we did something that you guys like. We're going to sell them live on the show tomorrow as well, but you guys can get in those things now, um, to streamlabs.com slash the world rolls. And we will give you a shout out on the Sunday show. Just wanted to give you guys the heads up now. We tweeted that link um, or that graphic too in case you need to know how to do it a little more. Thank you, thank you. Um, ben Rayner in here saying no spoilers, but that odd couple final exam match was amazing. Just wanted to say that. Thanks, I appreciate you watching. It was quite the match and uh, I hope people check it out and let me know what they think about that as well. You guys talking about the uh, calendar. Rob says fire, Bruce does the eyes. Danny is clapping, thanks Danny. Um, Ryan's clapping for us. Rob says, my abs are so tight. He just said that they are tight. He didn't say so tight. I added the so. Um, not since I've been home, I have carbs for literally every meal. Thank you to my dad who just went out to get me a bagel uh, during this storm. Appreciate that. Uh, the only problem with the calendar is time doesn't exist anymore, LL, but it will. It will. Bruce says he can't wait to see November. Why, Bruce? Do you know what's happening in November? It is the weirdest month by far. 
by far. It's ridiculous. Go off, Queens. Thanks, Pink Sweets. Appreciate you. Um, and to everybody who's giving us love. It's kind of, um, not, the word is definitely not embarrassing because none of us are embarrassed, but it's kind of, we feel vulnerable putting it out there, our first merch, and like, especially like with that picture, it's like very body heavy. Uh, so anyway, I hope it goes well and really appreciate you guys supporting. Uh, we have other shit to get to though, and we can talk about that more on The World Girls. So let's talk a little bit about Activision suing Netflix. Uh, I don't understand business to this extent, so I don't really get that you can do this, but Netflix is getting sued by Activision for poaching their CFO. Uh, this is according to Hollywood Reporter. Activision claims that Netflix induced CFO Spencer Newman to breach his employment contract while the CFO was actively involved in negotiations with the streamer on the game company's behalf. Activision also alleges that Netflix CEO Reed Hastings was personally involved in Newman's recruiting and hiring, which shows that Netflix tortoise and unethical conduct, tortious and unethical conduct is intentional and a derivative from the top. This marks the third major entertainment company following Fox and Viacom to allege Netflix is illegally poaching employees. Here's what I don't understand. What? I guess that's what I don't understand. What? What, what is illegally poaching employees? Are you not allowed to hire somebody else like I guess the illegal part is because there are negotiations with their you on behalf of their company you only know them because you guys are trying to do business and then to take them I guess that's illegal but like to me and again I really don't know this could be the dumbest thing I've ever fucking said because I don't know enough about this but to me it's like people should work where they want to work and if somebody offers the job to them like Netflix should be able to offer jobs to people anybody they want or hire anybody they want. And, and if that guy, the CFO wants to come be with them and he should be able to, uh, Haskell says if someone's under contract with someone else. Yeah. But like, that's how it kind of works when you're in the entertainment industry. Kind of like this happens all the fucking time. A lot of times they'll break their contract, but that's on them, not on the company. I feel like it's not Netflix's job to uphold Activision's, um, their contracts it's the cfos to figure that out and if they want to sue their cfo for breaking his contract that's one thing but why the other company again i don't know enough about this but that's just kind of my like initial gut on it uh netflix sliding in the dms like crazy that is so true that is so so true steamer says those legal fees must be why their fees are going up very possible uh, I think they've got a lot of reasons why their fees are going up, but I'm just going to keep paying it because in Netflix, my whole heart lies. Uh, Prince wasn't promised they coerced him into breach while involved in contract talks. Yeah, but like, isn't that still somebody's fault for being coerced into leaving? I don't know. I don't know. Gar says to put in a movie term, someone who's signed for one movie to jump ship and do another movie that ruins millions of dollars in business. Yeah, but that's the person's who jumped ship's fault, not the other movie that they went to's fault. That's just how I feel. I wonder if that makes any sense to you guys. If not, then maybe I'm far off base on this one. Let me know, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer or right here in the super chat. Do you think that the Activision is gonna win this? Do you think they should be allowed to sue Netflix? Do you think Netflix will settle? How do you think this will all work? And what do you think is the right thing to do here? Speaking of the right thing to do, movie theaters are fucked right now. We talk about this all of the time on the show. What the fuck is going to happen to movie theaters in 2021 and in the future? They're, they're in big trouble. And there's I have fully believed this entire time that movie theaters will make it out alive because we won't let them fail and we won't let them fall here. But is that real? I don't know. Here's what's happening in Congress, though, that might really help this. The stimulus package could grant several billion dollars to 60% of movie theaters in the country. Movie theaters in the United States are, as, as Hollywood reporters reporting, in trouble right now. Many remain closed due to the coronavirus, and the theaters that are able to remain open don't have much to offer. On top of that, the recent decision by Warner Brothers 
which we talk about extensively on this show, to drop all their 2021 movies on HBO Max the same day as theaters is bound to cause more problems for exhibitors. And we don't know that Warner Brothers is going to be the last one to do that. There could be several other companies that follow suit. But there could be a glimmer of hope on the horizon. Negotiations on a stimulus bill started up in Congress again this week. And part of that stimulus includes proposals for $15 billion for movie theaters. What do you guys think? Is it Congress's job to bail out these movie theaters? Should they allocate $15 billion of their funds to movie theaters? Do you think that it's more their job to make sure that we are fed right now and that stimulus packages are released to the people because we had one very early on and then nothing after that? Do you guys think that they should be doing both things? Um, how do you feel on this? What do you think is actually going to happen? Would love to know your thoughts on the possible $15 billion stimulus package for the 60% of movie theaters in the country that are really at risk of bankruptcy here. Steamer says they'll be fine. Warner Brothers news sucks, but how many of those movies would be massive hits? Kind of probably a couple of them. Um, I would say Wonder Woman, Dune, Kong. Um, I mean, it depends on what you mean by massive, but I think probably several. Thunder God says we can't even give people stimulus plans, but we have money to bail out theaters. I'm sorry, but theaters can wait. I kind of feel you on that. I feel torn, but it is hard when a lot of our, a lot of my friends are having a hard time eating right now and movie theaters get $15 billion. It's, that's a lot of fucking money. Zinar says it's absurd they haven't passed a new stimulus bill since April. I agree that is absurd. Simply Emily says I love, love, love watching movies in theaters, but honestly give the money to the people. Big corpse can wait. Bruce says we can't give people stimulus, but they want to bail out theaters. I don't know. Feel that. Zachary says I think feeding people and keeping people safe from COVID-19 is most important. Are these mutually exclusive though, guys? Should they just 15 billion here, 15 billion there? Again, I do not know enough about finances to know how fucked that would make us, but yeah, Katie Robinson, the good witch, says, I heard that Warner Brothers is going to be taking less of a cut from theaters for the films released on VOD, so it might not be as bad for theaters. I don't know. And it's not Warner Brothers' fault that the theaters aren't, when they do release the movies in theaters, they're not going to do as well because people are afraid to go to the fucking theaters right now. Like, Wonder Woman is releasing in theaters on Christmas. It is. But who the fuck's going? Some people, but not many, not the people who are at risk or wanting to stay super safe. Um, I don't know how long LA is even intending on doing this stay at home, but it could go right through then, which means that people won't even be allowed to go there. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Uh, I want to go into the Streamlabs for a second to see what's going on in here. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer says, Mark Jason Ali, congrats on the calendar, Roxy. Is it available for international shipping? How are you doing today? So as it says on the thing on that um, graphic, Mark, if you want international shipping, the only thing that we're having people do right now is email us, uh, theworldgirls at gmail.com. And we're going to try to sort something out to see how much it is to ship uh, to you guys. We'll have you guys pay for the additional shipping and then hopefully that will work. Um, we're, we want to reach out to our international audience, but it's just so much more challenging, but we're going to do what we can or try to do what we can to make that work with every individual who wants it there. Glenn Caesar in the stream lab says, hey, Roxy, I'm sure you'll make a full announcement when you're ready. So no worries if you don't want to answer this right now, but could you give us any hints on what you're planning on changing or adding for your Patreon? Um, such a great question. Yeah, I intended on doing that this past week, but being home and stuff, things have just been a little mad. Um, and I will make an entire announcement when I do it. I just want to do things that are fun, that are fun for me, that I get excited about, that are fun for you guys, that you get excited about, and that I know that we can achieve because um, it's not fair to not be doing that. We're doing such a great job on the World Girls Patreon right now. There's no reason for me not to be. Uh, I'm still putting up about the guests. I know that Kaiser is going to be coming on next weekend so there will be for the ten dollar up tier you guys can ask him questions there and i put the link every single day um so that it's almost just like using it as a website as well um and all of that stuff but yeah i definitely will be um writing something more for you guys or figuring out more and, and making that announcement i have definite ideas but i don't want to announce anything until i'm positive about that yet but thank you for asking uh, I really appreciate you always keeping me in line, Glenn Caesar. Like I say, heart and soul of the show. You can do no wrong. Ask whatever. Uh, all right. So let's see. Steamer says, I'm not going to theater until vaccine or Fast 9, whichever comes first. 
such an aggressive comment. I love that. Simply Emily says I'm not going to theater until we have enough people vaccinated. I don't trust people to wear masks when the lights are down. I kind of agree with that. Like people take them off. I really feel like they do. Um, so that's nerve wracking and concerning to me. Uh, until small businesses are given a relief package to save their businesses, they are to come wait, says Ryan. Yeah, some movie theaters are smaller businesses, but not the ones that the this $15 billion are going to. I don't think that they were included in that necessarily. I think that was the, the big babes. But then you also have to keep in mind that the thing to remember is that these big businesses, these massive corporations, if they go under, so many people will lose their jobs. Like the businesses are what feed the people. And I'm not saying that we should only give money to big corps. I so don't believe that. But if AMC goes out, think about everybody that's unemployed. Um, if they can't survive, then the people will lose their jobs. So that's concerning as well. Yeah. I like my new, when I make a point that I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Like what is that rocks? We are getting out of here in the next couple of minutes. So um, get in any last minute streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Rocky Stryer, super chats. I don't know if we've had a single super chat today, which is fine. I know times are tough for people, but um, if you can, then please do. We pretty much covered all the things I did want to discuss today. So uh, I appreciate you guys being here, listening. Some shout outs to people in here who have been here for a minute. Scott C, Haskell420, Bruce Banner, Redford Reddington, my amazing mod, Jake Yacoveta, keeping everybody in line, Rob K, Glenn Caesar, Zeno Hour, Scott Welsh, Ryan Peterson, where my ladies, Simply Emily, Thunder God, Cairo, um all the above alan payne katie robinson zachary gibbons just giving love john bainbridge thunder god you guys are awesome thank you thank you make sure you like this video don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already i do want to get to some of these apple reviews the podcast i told you guys i would do that a little bit ago and then let's be honest what happened i forgot that's literally what happened so no excuses, play like a champ. I put out a tweet about quotes that you live by. You guys were amazing. Like 300 people responded to it with their quotes. So freaking fun to look at all of those. It was crazy. All right, going to the, the um, what's this called? Reviews, going to the Apple Podcast reviews. I think that's a good way of <laughs> Roxy with the words today. Live at the Roxy Forever from DL Short with five stars. Thank you, says this show is truly a blessing in 2020. Roxy blends humor, heart, and wisdom along with great enthusiasm in a tight talk show format that really works in this tumultuous time. She's one of the best to do it. Simply put, she's got a voice for podcasts and a face for any screen, big or small. What a fucking doll you are, DL Short. I will take that one straight to the bank. My mom thinks I'm handsome, says pod star. Love the pod. I work overnight, so this pod helps me get through work. Love that. I see that on our pod um, numbers where we are rising a little bit. So for anybody who is starting to listen exclusively on podcasts so you can avoid looking at these, my non-makeup face every day, I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys who want to watch here as well, though. It's fucking awesome. Joe Ashley says, my favorite show with five stars. Live with Roxy is a great show. Roxy is beautiful, intelligent, comedically great interviewer who treats her guests as a friend that she hasn't seen in a while. Roxy is brutally honest, so true, and has a big heart. She cares for her guests and her audience. She calls rock stars who she asks individually how they're feeling and doing. She gives great advice in Roxy's advice segment. This is not your basic entertainment show. She talks about entertainment, uh, Hollywood entertainment for upcoming films and television to offset drama. She talks politics of today, sports, love advice, and much, much more. Oh my God, this is so fucking sweet. We all need to escape from the bad day we're having. This show welcomes the weirdos and dorks like me to do something amazing that feels like family of misfits. I love it. If you want to listen to a real down chick that rocks, that's easily to, to, easy to talk to and does funny. Eh, and does funny. This show is worth listening to. You are amazing. Um, guys, a few more in here. So much love. Lloyd Nance, my first super chatter ever, says Rox Australia is the best person ever. Oh my God. She is the best and prettiest and most intelligent friends. Uh, Doreen and Steph, so true. Always keeps it real on her show. She is the host with the most, and she has dimples. I love her. She's the best. I do have dimples. That is true. You guys are so fucking cool. 
Dina K. Yes, Dina says one of my favorite podcasts with five stars. Live of the Roxy is one of my favorite shows. and I've been enjoying it on YouTube for months now. As a busy mom, I love that the show is now available in podcast form. The show is entertaining, engaging, honest, and sometimes vulnerable. Roxy does an amazing job, makes you feel like you're chatting with a friend, and sometimes that's all you need. Plus, she gives the best advice. Give a listen to the show if you're awesome. I promise I won't. you won't regret it. Oh, my God, Dina, you're such a doll. I really got to get back to advice corner then. It sounds like you guys like that one. So I'm excited about that. Um, John Get Bent just got your calendar email. We'll look into that in a second. Um, yes. All right. That was the last one to read for today. Thank you guys so much. Anybody who's given me the five-star rating um, and that comment there, it means the entire world to me. You guys are fucking great. Uh, go buy the calendar. Put your toilet seat down. All the things. Uh, with making your bed. Speaking of making your bed, Jake Yakovetta said, fine, here's a super chat. LOL. Jake, did I bully you into that? Be honest with me. Don't lie to me. I appreciate you, Jake. Legit dead in a ditch without Jake. Need him in my life forever. Paul through JP in the streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy says, fam, what did I miss? Mandalorian was dope. Mank was amazing. Also, Max, my dog, says hi. Hi, Max. Um, is that, I just keep, I don't hear anybody talking about it. I just keep seeing it. Is it Mank? Is that how you say it? Uh, that's Fincher's new movie, right? I didn't watch it. But you know what I did watch last night? I can't talk about it yet on air, but I cannot wait to. Um, pro uh, pr uh, Promising Woman, is that what it's called? Uh, holy shit. I, I can't talk about it, but holy shit. Uh, promising Young Woman. Promising Young Woman. I cannot wait till I can talk about it. Apparently on the 15th, the embargo is lifted. I already saw that people had some reviews on Rotten Tomatoes though, but that's what it says, embargo is lifted then. It's Carrie Mulligan and Bo Burnham. Um, also a cast of like fucking crazy stars. Laverne Cox makes, um, uh, gives, I, well, I can't speak on um, performances. Alison Brie, Adam Brody, Ray Nicholson, who spoiler alert is Jack Nicholson's son and I went to college with him. Um, and then like Jennifer Coolidge, Clancy Brown, it was fucking uh, Christopher Mint Plaza. It was stacked, stacked. Connie Britton, um, I, I was shocked with all the people who made appearances in this. And I, like some of them were small cameos. Max Greenfield makes an awesome cameo. Uh, it was really, really, truly something that I cannot wait to talk about. So stay tuned for that. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's insane. And that's all I can say on that. But I have been watching more things. So I'll be doing more reviews as well. Name drops says Glenn Caesar. What? Naming the people who are in it? Oh, that I went to college with Ray Nicholson. He would not remember who I was. Although we did party together quite a few times. But, you know, he was a, a frat star. So there was that. Um, Rob says, wait, what? Roxy went to college with Jackson? Guys, I went to USC. I went to college with fucking everybody's son. That school is like, it's called the University of Spoiled Children for a reason. Everybody fucking rolls through that school. Um, yeah, when I was there, uh, Patrick Schwarzenegger was there. Uh, there, was, there was a ton, a ton, a ton of peoples. Um, Charleston Heston's grand, uh, grandson, Jack Heston, was uh, a friend of mine there. There's so many fucking people. It was wild. Anyway, getting out of here. Much love to you guys. Thank you so much. Go by the calendar. Spread some love. Stay safe, stay sane, stay the fuck at home if you can. And uh, I love you guys a lot. And I'll see you tomorrow live at the Roxy and then for World Girl Sunday. It's going to be a day of broadcasting. You won't be alone. You haven't been so far. 300 and, no, 265 days, I think it's today. Glenn will let us know. Leave a comment, thumbs up, all that great stuff. Mwah. Love you guys lots. See you tomorrow.